So Mead have beaten Westmead 16 points to 15. Um, I'm delighted to be joined here by Jason Keelan from the Loaf of Bread podcast here to react to this game. Uh, we were obviously talking off camera there just a little bit about the game in the end. Mead just probably had a little bit more, I suppose, in the, in the closing stages. But what were your uh, thoughts on the game? Yeah, happy enough with a lot of the, the Westmead stuff overall. Uh, there were probably parts that were a little bit frustrating, particularly the end and um, probably used a lot of energy in the black hair period when Sam Duncan was was showing the line. Um, thought, I thought there was a, a lot of me that thought we could have held out. Um, but I, I think the kind of around the midfield part, Harmon and Menton kind of just had us a little bit more physically. Um, Ray Canella now, in fairness, he was very good. And his kind of AFL experience, Sean, throughout, there was a couple of good catches, um, good little plays. Obviously, he's, he loves pinging the ball around with his left foot. But... Um, I think we're just a midfield. We're kind of slightly outdone. Um, defensively, we were good. Boydu, I thought, did pretty well. Jack Smith did pretty well. Um, he's definitely one that there's a lot of a lot of hope for in this county. I think, especially playing up in Scaries as well. So, um, but overall, yeah, I just I thought there were bits and pieces that went wrong. But overall, I suppose we have to be kind of happy. We're disappointed, obviously, to lose. But uh, at the same time, it's it's kind of hard to know where we're at. I suppose after such a long period of. Of nothing is really we're, we're we're kind of waiting to see what happens next i suppose and then mayo next week will be interesting i suppose that's a, that brings its own kind of challenge there's maybe the rivalry between us and me obviously been neighbors is one thing but when like you know mayo come to town it, it could be a different story altogether so yeah 100 percent. yeah and i suppose like we, we were saying it there like uh you know in many ways like the game plan i think from westmead was was spot on in many ways. And I suppose there's an old expression in, in sports in many ways where they say like stalls make fights. And I think with Westmead, with the way you set up, the way you kind of get men behind the ball, although like sometimes a lot of people kind of see that as negative tactics and whatnot. I think it's a, it's a great tactic to have against Mead because I don't, like we were kind of saying earlier, I don't know if they have too many players who can kick points from 30, 40 metres or way up the field. Like you could see at different moments in the game, they were trying to run through is quite a lot. And I think it wasn't working. It was only kind of at the end really where maybe a bit of indiscipline kind of cost is. But I suppose from Jack Cooney in general and Westmead, like you definitely... The game plan was spot on. It was maybe just a bit of indiscipline, maybe towards the end that um, that cost you. Yeah, and I suppose it'll the interviews after. I know I haven't seen any of them, but it'll probably come back to the old cliche of you know there's there's positives to take out of the game, which there is. And yeah, the tactics mightn't be to everyone's cup of tea, funneling back so many players at a, at a time. But when it when it works, it's it's kind of what we need. We need something to work. We need some you know positive stuff going forward. Um. We can't be we can't be living off 2004 for the rest of our lives, sadly. Um, so <laughs> I still get you know, reminded, 20, unfortunately. Yeah, the 20 year anniversary, you know, of that is is coming up soon. Like that's how long ago it is. So, um, yeah, the indiscipline was was annoying. The black card for Sam Duncan, I, I don't really know what happened. Um, it was a strange one for one in a tussle for one player to get black card and one player to get yellow card. And I thought that was a bit unusual. Probably have to see it again. Um, but yeah, definitely positives for Jack Cooney. Um, Maybe on the mental side, just not been able to kill it off. But as you said, in discipline and perhaps a bit of tiredness from the likes of Ron O'Toole and them kind of had to funnel back into defence when um when we were down to 14. So it was kind of more just holding out for that 10 minutes. Um, although we did actually get a couple of scores and we did come out in the lead after the, the 10 minute period. There was you just kind of felt that Mead had the had the edge a little bit. Uh we will be disappointed. Like there's no other way to say it. To lose by one bit of annoying really annoyed at the end don't know what the crack was with the ref when John Heston was like clearly asking him how long is left and he just sort of yeah shrugged the shoulders and said a half and a clue so yeah, he had no option obviously to go for goal then as it turned out and yeah losing by one is never it's never good you'd only rather lose by 20 but uh, at the same time yeah a lot of positives to take um defensively as well having Jimmy Dolan back in kind of playing the the roving role as such he is he is pretty good at it in fairness we don't get to see as much from I think by the looks of going forward um, and that kind of role he's, he's nipped in with goals over the years um, and maybe this this kind of role from is maybe more settled in defence so we'll see what happens against Mayo next week I suppose Yeah absolutely like and I suppose you were alluding to it there as well like Ron O'Toole he definitely looks quite bright as well and you've Luke Lachlan you know John Heslin who's obviously been doing it for a number of years like he kicked mm. one or two fantastic points 
I suppose having the likes of Ron O'Toole in there as well, like there was a couple of times he definitely looked quite bright indeed. So I suppose that's a, a positive as well, kind of seeing those players kind of emerge in the team. Yeah, Ron, I suppose at club level has been, he's been very prolific like the last number of years. Um, John Heston, of course, has been around what seems like forever at this stage, but um, certainly like two of the two of the key players in our team. And I suppose I was saying earlier, Jerry Regan, I suppose, has made a little bit anonymous today, but for whatever reason, whether it was just me sort of pinpointing them or just the tactics kind of that we employed against them today, but um, certainly didn't have as much influence as he normally would. Um, but yeah, definitely like seeing the likes of Ronan go forward and Duke Lachlan, Luke has been around for a long time. He's he's a he's a downs man, same as the the club I used to play for years ago, and he's always been known around here to have that kind of skill and that flair that goes with it, like the dummy he threw in the sideline. You know, it's just one example yeah. of the kind of stuff that he does. But been out in New York for a few years, I suppose we kind of missed him a little bit in the Westmead the underage setup and beyond. But now that he's back, he seems to be he seems to be on pretty good form. So I'd love to see him. I'd love to see him take on the, you know, the lads in Mayo next week, like, you know, get a crack against like Oshin Mullen or someone like that and just see what, it, what he's like against, against the big, big kind of names, you know, um, he was good today in fairness to him. You can't, I couldn't criticize any of the, any of the Westmead boards as such, you know, they all put in an effort. Um, defensively were very good. I just thought it was around the midfield and maybe a little bit of the half forward line who were kind of holding back a bit, but, uh, but otherwise, yes, yeah, as I said, a lot of positives to take. It's just, it is just another one of those days over Westmead where we're so close to the end and just can't get over the line. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully in time it'll come to us. Yeah, I suppose it was definitely interesting there towards the end because I suppose like the nature of the way the league is structured, of course, like a win almost means, you know, four points instead of two in yeah. many ways because like you could have had a situation there where if Mead lost, you could be talking maybe about yourselves to potentially be in a promotion battle and Mead maybe even to potentially you know, being a, a relegation battle and being in a relegation playoff. And in the end, it kind of works out, I suppose, the way many people would have expected it, which is me to, to get the victory. But I suppose that's the nature of the league. Like, it's probably it's probably a harder defeat to take in some ways, given the fact that had you have won this game, I think, you know, you would have been looking at the down game, maybe, you know, mm. in, the, in a couple of weeks to potentially maybe seal a, a top two place. And then, you know, it's one game and you never know. Yeah, it's, I suppose it's the frustration of the nature of the times we're in that Mayo next week becomes a little bit more important maybe when at least if we got the win against me today we kind of would have had a few points two points under our belt you kind of might have been thinking okay that's you know let's build on that while there is stuff to build on today the fact that we're you know it's all well and good we've got positives we're, we're on zero points we've got two games left to basically you know ensure that we kind of stay where we are as such and not not get dragged into going down and literally like against down it's going to be it's going to be i would expect that to be a fairly kind of cagey enough game i probably could see could see it been like the battle of the bottom two probably at the end by the looks of it so we don't we go into the mayo game next week with a bit of hope i suppose but um you have to think that they will go in as monstrous favorites and it will come down to us against down up in I think we're away for that one so I think we've made it home next week so yeah it's going to come down to that and it is it's so it's just the nature of the times it's so disappointing that when you put in a good performance like that that really it would actually count for nothing really in the end because but that was kind of that was our I, I think in my eyes in it that was a big one for us that we thought maybe get a scalp maybe replay 2015 all over again in Crow Park that kind of thing so it was um it was disappointing and Mayo now next week is going to be it's going to be a good crack against the O'Connors and Co when they come to town so yeah absolutely and I suppose like how, how do you reckon this group will, will play out then in the end I suppose with the fact obviously like looking at me they definitely had some you know good performers on the day like Jordan Morris was hitting three points I thought Dara Campion looked quite bright as well like how would you see me even going now do you reckon they'll be I suppose up there battling for well obviously you'd have to imagine they'll probably beat down and potentially be in the top two maybe alongside Mayo so how would you how would you see that they'll get on now potentially facing maybe a Cork or Kildare over on the other side of the of the group? Yeah, I was a bit um I won't say I was stunned, I suppose. I was I was a little bit surprised that Kildare um took the scalp kind of against Cork. Yeah. I thought there's been some I suppose my predictions this weekend have been absolutely appalling in general, but um I thought that maybe Cork might have kicked on after the you know beaten Kerry kind of so dramatically. I thought maybe 
maybe there's something in it, you know, they might kick on from it. Same with Tip, you know, getting beaten as well. Like there was a lot of strange, in my eyes, and a strange kind of defeats that none of the teams who, you know, were successful last year really kicked on at all. So uh, I think Mead will, Mead the Mayo is obviously going to be the one that will decide, you know, who finishes top of this group. Yeah, nothing nothing to say that Mead won't do it. Uh, like Harmon, in fairness to him, Harmon and Menton were pretty good around midfield today. Uh, I think to give Mayo a good kind of battle, it, it'll come down to whether the Mead defenders can keep up with, you know, Tommy Conroy and the likes, you know, who are clearly hitting form already, you know, before championship starts. So and then the other side, Kildare and Cork, uh, you'd like to, I'd like to see Kildare, you know, do well. There's, there's always, you know, oh, McGinney was coming in, McGinney was going to win them in all Ireland. And the next person comes in is going to win them in all Ireland. And it was nice to see them beat, uh, to beat Cork at the same time. And, it, it might be something the little spur that they need. Obviously, they've got Jimmy Highland, you know, a, a Bally Teague man who kicks, you know, a hundred scores a season. So yeah, he's um, it's it's definitely definitely going to be an interesting one. I think me the Mayo though, <clears throat> no no doubt will top this group and whoever goes on. <clears throat> I think overall, overall, I I'd still fancy Mayo just for the experience. I think of been in so many, you know, big games. Um, me, they obviously have had their Leinster finals, you know, and gotten beaten the same as we have. So, yeah, I think I'd fancy Mayo overall. Um, a Mayo Kildare final, I think, would be an interesting one. That'd be one I'd like to see, just just to see how someone like Jimmy Highland gets on against, you know, the Mayo backs as well. Yeah, I suppose you'd have a repeat at Newbridge and Ower then as well in, in that, yeah. that whole kind of yeah. scenario. So I'm yeah. sure, sure Mayo would be, you know, you know, jumping at the bit really to to get the yeah. better there. I suppose, like, what what would you even see from now as a success, I suppose, for Westmead this season? I know, unfortunately, you have the, the good hell dubs, unfortunately, in, in Leinster, yeah. so it's always going to be very tough with them. But, like, what what would you kind of see as a success from this point, anyway, for, for Westmead? Yes, uh, I suppose if we've been brutally honest, be competitive against Mayo next week, as in <clears throat> not knock them out the wrong side of a hockeying or, or anything like that. Um and then look to the down game has been has been the one to win, um, and hopefully, hopefully kind of put down bottom of the group um, and keep us kind of slightly above them. But then going into the championship, then I think uh, we have leash first. I think I think it's um, so, yeah. our first game. Like that's essentially that that is our Leinster final in many ways playing leash because, like the next round, yeah, we'll come up, we'll see Dublin somewhere along the line as we always do and. You, you kind of look at the Dublin game and the, the lads are probably looking at the backdoor game after that. But of course, with the lack of, you know, that kind of structure this year, Leash is essentially, you know, the kind of the winner bust kind of for the season, really, I would think. Um, so Mayo next week be competitive down. I, I would think we give them a good rattle. If we played as well as we did today, um, I wouldn't like to see us sit back as much against them. Um, I'd like to see us kind of go a bit more forward. And then Leash, Leash is the big one. Um, especially my in-laws are down in leash as well. I really want to get one over on them. So, yeah, it's it's interesting, alright, because you could have a, a scenario where you played them. I think I think that happened a couple of years ago as well, where you played them in the in the league final, I think Division Three final, and then played them again in the yeah. the championship. It could be a similar situation where maybe you played them in a relegation playoff and then played them again in a in a in the championship. And I suppose that those two games are almost as as important as each other. Like if if that did uh, if that did come about. Yeah, it'd be, I suppose then, yeah, you put it that way, it'd be like nearly two all Ireland finals, I suppose, trying to stave off relegation, trying to go on in Leinster. So, yeah, we've, um, our history with Leash, I suppose, you know, is, is pretty long running at this stage. You know, everyone everyone remembers 04 and Pawdy versus Mikko, that kind of thing, and the replay. But, yeah, more recent times, um, we've kind of been hit and miss against them, I suppose, had a couple of wins. I think we've been beaten by them as well. And, while there might have been, we, we might like to believe in some ways, I think down here there were, were a bit ahead of them. I think Leash have, have got plenty of strong players in their in their lineup that I, th- I think we would need to be stronger around midfield as well to to take them on. They always they always have, have a couple of players you have to take on. Even like you know Ross Munley seems to have been around like forever. Like he was he was my coach. I think when the lads were playing in Maynooth in two thousand and four, like he was the coach there. So like he's literally been around forever. So yeah, they've got a they've got a lot of good players as well. Leash. So I would. I, I can't say you'd pick one or the other. You, you probably would like to 
you'd sacrifice the the league one, I think, for winning Leinster. To be honest, so if you had to take one or the other, um, but ideally we'd like to beat them twice. That would be that would be pretty sweet to beat them twice. So yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I can imagine. So like, and yeah, it'll be interesting. Like I do, uh, I think I said on one of my podcasts before. I have a lot of family in Athlone, so. Look, listen, you know, as a although I'm yeah. a Dublin born and bred, I always kind of look yeah. at Westmead on the side. I don't want to repeat it 2004 now or anything like that, but I'd, lo- I'd like <laughs> to see Westmead just kind of be somewhat competitive. And um, we'll, we'll see what happens. I suppose a word on the hurlers, um, just from earlier, like um, against Waterford, like I didn't watch the game, yeah. now, to, to be completely honest, but you know, very close game in the end. And look, listen, there was a lot, I suppose there was a lot of people speaking out after the Galway game saying, you know, it's a little bit unfair for Westmead to be in Division 1A, but. I suppose that you know after being that close and having Killian Doyle back in the team, you definitely proved that maybe you know you can be competitive. I suppose in in Division One A. Yeah, it was. Um, I think it seems kind of a little bit of a sort of left left a bit of a scalp behind in some ways. That you know, I know Water forgot two red cards today as well, but there was we started off pretty pretty bad I thought a little bit we we gave up five kind of quick points to Waterford which you know you, can, you can't do well regardless of whether you're home or away we kind of just kept clawing our way back into the game there were some of the same mistakes like against Galway last week we just tried there's too many shorthand passes around the middle of the field trying to play our way forward and you know we we have good forwards in fairness like it, it we should be kind of trying to knock the ball into the corners the same way that all the top teams do knock it into the corners let them have a go one-on-one with their man and just see what happens but yeah, there's too many times that we tried it against Galway and Galway just ripped us to pieces. Like that, that game was we should the ref should have blown up when we went to point to nothing up. That would have been much easier if we just blew it up then. But um, water for today, yeah, was was there were much more positive signs. I think um, I think all the management would take a lot a lot of heart out of it. But um, I suppose it's kind of it is that kind of thing for Westmead. You know, it's all, it was an awful lot of times where we're going a lot of a lot of positives. We'll improve on it the next day and then next week it's always a lot of positives will improve on it again the next day and it's always kind of just the same uh it does it is kind of annoying for the likes of us now Antrim are kind of um sort of I suppose disproving the kind of myth a little bit that you can't compete at the top if you have them but for us like our chances come around as against the top team so it takes so long there's such a gap in between that even for the likes of Galway and stuff they can play all the young lads because they only play the top teams whereas for us the gaps in between are so big that by the time your next chance comes around, the squad might have been revamped completely. And for a lot of lads, it's their first game against the top team. Whereas the likes of the Galway lads will have been playing the top teams and even they're like their trainer matches, you know, or potentially like, you know, two top teams against each other. So it is a bit frustrating that way. Um, I think it will work to our benefit. It's just, you know, if, if we only get a year or two at it and then we're gone again for another two, three, four or five years, whatever it is to come back again, the team is revamped we're starting from scratch again so uh, I think the way this it's kind of set up with so many tiered systems it, it's never it's never really going to get us to the top we're always going to be you know that team who gets a shot and gets like you know well done headline on the paper you know for trying kind of thing it's um it's frustrating I know it's just stuck to the championship I suppose that's a whole other whole other debate as well but yeah a bit frustrating good good performance against Waterford though and I'd like to I'd like to see us kick on um if possible Killian Doyle was was pretty class today and having him back was brilliant and Kieran Doyle with his uh, left-handed strike last week is probably, uh, probably yeah, the most viewed video, of, class, video yeah. of last week I'd say yeah that was pretty impressive yeah off his bad side as well so yeah 100% yeah it was a top class top class finish altogether mm. I suppose the Joe McDonough I mean that's probably the main aim really for, for yourselves for the, for the hurlers obviously like I suppose probably not a lot between many of the teams I know people would probably look at Kerry or Carlo probably as the as the favourites but I suppose you were in the final there I think two years back to back not too long ago so I suppose the yeah. the chances of, of getting promotion anyway like if you know I suppose if you play like that you know against Waterford and you play like that and you you know against your Kerry's or your Carlos I think definitely a, a real chance then of getting up to the the Lee McCarthy for next year yeah that is that'll be the hope I suppose like we have yeah we have a good tradition kind of I suppose in the well the old Christie ring and then up to the new the Joe McDonough but um I would remember like being at the the finals and I think it was like 05 and 06, you know, we we three Christie rings under our belt, you know, after not many years, which is pretty good. But again, it's that kind of thing of you go up, you get one year at the big teams, you get relegated, you come back down. It's just, as, as someone said on a, someone who listened to the other day, we're just the most yo-yo team ever. Like in football, in the league, you know, our Westmeets history is just 
promotion, relegation, promotion, relegation, over and back. The hurling, it's, you know, do really well at Joe McDonough or Christy Ring, probably get up to the top, have a go with the lads, get sent back down again and back up again. So it would be nice to have a bit of stability, I suppose, whether it is even just, you know, a few years of good runs in the Joe McDonough, you might win it, might get promoted. But you see, like, Kerry and Antrim, like, taking a scalp against Clare the other week was was brilliant for the the likes of us who were kind of not considered a, one of the strongest teams. And even today, like against Kilkenny, they really put it up to them um, for long periods of that game. And uh, probably, in some ways, probably a bit disappointed to lose by whatever they lost by in the end. They, they probably felt there was maybe a bit more in them. They got a couple of questionable referee and freeze given near the end to Kilkenny. But um, yeah, the likes of that kind of gives, I suppose, the likes of us hope uh, that maybe we can start to do something. And we just have to kind of keep focusing on that and maybe the like Antrim win over Clare should be something that we should be looking at and, you know, figure out what exactly did they do? Was it just, you know, a bit more ferociousness? Was it not trying to, you know, pass the ball out 10 yards around midfield and passing it, just let it into forwards and let them see what they can do. And I think that's what we, we could be doing. Um, Cause defensively we're not too bad. Like, yeah, we shipped, you know, so much against Goy, but that was, uh, that was, you know, likely to happen in some ways. But defensively, like we have, we have good lads in defence. Um, it's just a case of just getting the ball out quicker and st- stop, stop messing around with it, like in defence, and just do what the other teams do and just get rid of it. Like the game doesn't need to be played in defence. You should be letting, letting the forwards just run, run right and see what they can do. If they don't score, so be it. At least, at least the ball is up the other end, and we don't have to, you know, keep keep defending all the time against against teams. So like we we've had some, we've had some bad losses though against. Teams at our level in recent years as well. Like I know we we shipped a fair bit to Leash, I think, um, a couple of years ago as well. And certain things, you know, Mark Cavanagh for Leash on the day won the John McDonough, I think it was final, was was pretty on fire as well and kind of crucified us. So yeah, I just hope that we could I just hope that we could kind of compete at, you know, top level maybe, but definitely compete at the Joe McDonough and be being around there all the time. That would be kind of the big hope for us, really. Yeah, hundred percent. And I suppose, like, obviously, we've seen with Galway being Limerick today. Like, I suppose, so mm. you know, like, no, no real shame. And I suppose what they did to you last week because you know they've yeah. they've only gone out and beaten the the side that haven't been beaten in the past two years. I suppose yeah. Low for Bread podcast. How did the how did that come about? Uh, the podcast came about from I suppose my love my love of GA in general. Um, I was no good as a footballer. Um, to be honest, I was I was actually a better soccer player. Funnily enough, um, but it's the same as myself. I, I, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I just love the G and I love to kind of crack around it as well. And so was poor here for us, I suppose. Like, like you, you as a dub, you know, winning Leinster is kind of, you know, it's a given kind of nearly at this stage. But yeah. for us, like that was like that was like winning the All Ireland. So, and just to crack the body brought to us at the time, and been a a big kind of history man as well. I've written a few history books and stuff recently. So it was just nice to bring an old kind of speech to life in some ways. And I thought it was very Irish, you know, the loaf of bread and the famous grain of rice speech that Paddy had down here. So yeah, it kind of spurred from that. Um, the plan originally was just to interview the likes of my brother who plays around the county here and his mates and a couple of messages and emails later, I was interviewing all Ireland winners and AFL players. And yeah, it's kind of taken off. And the second season now coming out in July is a, it's the first ever for the GA where there's over 45, nearly 50 clubs at this stage from around the world who are going to come on one by one and kind of promote their club and tell us about the GA abroad. And that came from my love of, of travel as well. I've been to Fortune to go to some amazing places and see, you know, the GA at work kind of a little bit in these countries. And I just thought maybe they just need a little bit more promotion at home and let people know they exist. And that's kind of where, where I'm at at the moment. So I sent a, an email and a couple of Instagram messages to about 10 clubs to cover all the continents and a bit of Central Europe. And at the moment, between word of mouth, it's just 47 clubs have asked to come on. So, yeah, it's good crack. It's a, it's a lot of work, but it's good fun. And, yeah, it's going well. So I can only hope it continues anyway. Yeah, hundred percent. And know, definitely a great idea. Definitely interviewing all the the different clubs. Like I know for myself, I spent a bit of time at Edmonton. I was um, playing briefly oh, yeah. for Wolftones GA. I was part of that club just for for the you know couple of months. I was there three four months. Mm. And yeah, you don't you don't really see the kind of work that you know a lot of them other clubs across the country really do because you know they they put in so much work. And a lot of those clubs are very very well ran as well. Like you'd, you'd be surprised yeah. to see how you know well ran they are. Yeah. There's um, it's just nice to hear even like 
a lot of the clubs have have sent on people who aren't from Ireland, you know, to play. Like, you know, I on one of them I had Lewis, who was from Colchester, strong English accent, telling me a story of how he got into GA, or like Danica, who's originally from Sydney, playing out in Germany. And it's just the stories you get are pretty incredible. But then of course you do get like um the odd, you know, star, you know, former Kilkenny Camogie player who's played in many games teaching out in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam and running the club out there, like that kind of thing. So yeah, it's more, I kind of do like the story telling side of things. I love, I just, I'd sit and listen to people telling good stories all day long. And that's kind of part of it. I don't, I don't want them to come on and feel uncomfortable or have to talk about championship structures or any of that yeah. kind of stuff. It's just tell us about your memories, tell us about the crack, tell us about the nights out, out there, how the GA club runs, do you get any locals involved? And that's kind of it. And so far, it's I think it's part of the reason this kind of spread so well is that so many the the original ten clubs sort of passed around word of mouth, saw bits and pieces on the page, and overnight, like I had a couple of hundred new followers randomly, and a lot of them were GA clubs around the world who were then sending messages going, "Oh, we'd love to be involved. You know, can you throw us in?" And they throw in their tagline, like you know, the guys in Luleå up in the Arctic Circle in Sweden are like, "We're definitely the highest club in the world." And then you've like. Shunde Gales in China saying, oh, we're the, the smallest club in the world, bring us on, that kind of thing. So it's um it's been good. I I, I'm, I really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to it starting in, in July as well. Um, it'll probably run until November, December, I'd say, at this rate. So perfect. Yeah. Well, look, listen, I'll, I'll link it down below anyway for anyone to, to go yeah. to go to go check it out and they can have a look. So um Appreciate yeah, look, it, listen, yeah. uh, cheers, Jason, for, for coming on. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, anytime. Thanks a million.